Welcome to the USU Career Studio podcast that helps you navigate your career path. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to tell your friends and family all about it. Subscribe to our podcast on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, or anywhere else you listen to get access to our newest content. Thanks for joining us for our Friday face-to-face episode. I'm Marissa Armistead, your host, and I'm so excited to welcome Captain Kent King to the show. Welcome, Kent. Thank you for letting me be here. Oh, we're excited to have you. Kent started his career with an interest in hotel administration, which led to a 12-year career in the hospitality business. Eventually, he went on to own his own business and started a mortgage company that opened offices in Utah, Nevada, Idaho, and Arizona. He then desired the ability to fly himself to his offices, so he enrolled in an aviation program and became a pilot. After falling in love with aviation, he went on to receive a second bachelor's degree in aviation science, eventually becoming a commercial airline pilot and he flew for seven years. As a part of his retirement, Kent decided to teach at USU, which pushed him to further his education and and gain a master's of aviation in 2019. Currently, he is a professional practice instructor for Utah State University. So Kent, this month's theme is lifelong learning, and I think you are the perfect person to talk to us about continually learning and growing in our careers. I know I already spilled the beans about your, your fun fact, which is that you fly to work. So explain a little bit about how often did you do that? How often? Talk to us about what that means. <laughs> well, thank you for letting me be a part of lifelong learning. I truly believe that is my life. I'm still learning. But in regards to flying to work, as a commercial airline pilot, you can live anywhere you want in, around the world. And I had the privilege of commuting to Minneapolis, St. Louis, Chicago. But here, I live in Heber City, Utah. And I had the privilege of the university was selling one of their aircraft. And I had the privilege of purchasing a pilot. Piper Arrow, a 1974 Piper Arrow. It just gets me up in the air and gets me a chance to fly back and forth. It's only a 50 minute flight from Heber to here. And so when the weather permits, I fly up in the mornings and I teach all day and then I can fly home. And uh, there's just nothing more exciting than when you touch down and land and you get to come in and teach these outstanding students here at Utah State. So I have a great time with it and I really enjoy flying. Amazing. I've never met somebody who can say the same. So... <laughs> So you are are unique in and of that. But for today's conversation, you I'd actually love to rewind. I'd love to go back to your early college days when you were trying to decide, you know, what major should I pick? What career should I be pursuing? You know, talk to us about that process. Was it open and fluid? Did it feel rigid and narrow? Talk to us about that process. You know, when I first went to my first university, I really thought, I grew up in Las Vegas, Nevada. And in Las Vegas, there were these hotels everywhere you could see. And it, it was small. It, was, it wasn't like it is now, but um, I kind of grew up around the hotel, the hospitality business. I went to school and uh, I enrolled in the accounting program. And after my first semester, and maybe as many students feel, I just realized that wasn't for me. And so I had the privilege of going in to talk to my career service offices. And I said, I don't want to be an accountant anymore. I like hotels, but I don't want to be an accountant. And But these are some of the things that I like to do. And I, I love to ski. And so I joined like the ski team and I said, hey, why don't I be a ski instructor? Well, then I thought, well, I like this teaching. My mother was a teacher and I thought, well, maybe I want to be a teacher. And well, then I was, a, I put my way through school uh, teaching clogging. I was a clogging instructor. And so while I was there, I met my wife and she was a clogger and we got married and we took an opportunity, a professional entertainment opportunity to go out and uh, dance out in Nashville, Tennessee in a, a show called Country Music USA. There was a, a park out there called Opryland. And while we were out there, getting married kind of settled me down just a little bit because I had so many different ideas of what I wanted to do. And while I was out there, we sat down and said, what do you enjoy? And I said, I really think that uh, hospitality business would be fun, but I don't necessarily want to be in a Accounting. And so we talked to different universities and their, their career departments and found out they have this the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, they had a program called the marketing. You could uh, focus on marketing in the hospitality business. And so we left Nashville, left the university we were at and departed together uh, on a new adventure. And we started, uh, I went to uh, the University of Nevada, Las Vegas and studied the hospitality business. And 
I loved it. It was something I thoroughly enjoyed. I was focused only on that part of my career. And I worked in the hotel business. They required you to have 400 hours in the hospitality business. So I worked as a chef. I worked as a waiter. I worked at the, in reservations. And so I had the opportunity and I found that my love was in sales, sales and marketing. And so I had the privilege of uh, uh, graduating my first career, my first career, as well as my first degree was in the hospitality business. I also was real fortunate that uh, they recommended that I do what's called an internship. And so the company that I really wanted to work for was Marriott Hotels. And so I had the privilege of working for uh, Marriott Hotels out of my internship was at the Anaheim Marriott. Now, can you believe that you can actually go to work and at night you can go to Disneyland? <laughs> Oh my goodness. That was awesome. My wife and I, we thought we were in heaven. We'd work all day and then we, you could get a season pass at Disneyland for $99. And we, we would go to Disneyland in the evening and we just really had fun learning together. And uh, once I ended up graduating, I went to work. Uh, most of my career was with Marriott Hotels. Very cool. Well, and so this kind of leads, leads me into my next question, which is about your work in, in hotel administration. I'm curious curious, you know, what aspects of this industry was interesting to you? I know you've hinted at a couple of those things, but what really drew you into this um, besides your background in maybe seeing, um, you know, lots of hotels and, and, and whatnot? And then also, I'd love to hear about some life lessons that came from maybe taking courses in this, but also just working in this field. You know, you hit it. That's a great, great question. First of all, I'll give you a little background. I really enjoy, and you'll you'll find it uh, talking to me, is I love talking with people and getting to know them. And in the hospitality business, you have to take care of them. You have to wake them up, feed them breakfast. You, you take care of their meeting. You feed them lunch. And then in the evening, you, you go out and you have some dinner and you put them to bed. And I thought, that was kind of my life is how can I take care of others? And I really enjoyed it. And kind of getting back to the education part of it, when I got with Merritt Hotels and studying their internship program, they allowed me to go in work in every single department in the hotel, in the hospitality business. So I worked a front desk. I worked night audit. I worked a housekeeping, including the, the rooms. I had the chance to work in the sales and marketing department. And I found that that was the sales and marketing was an area that kind of drew me that I was most excited. I, lo I loved all aspects of it, but that was something that I focused on. And so once I completed that internship, uh, Marriott Hotels had a program where when, when you graduated, so I still had one more year of schooling and I went back and I just focused on getting prepared and getting graduated. And I used the names of the people that I worked for. And it just happened to be that the general manager that I worked for under the internship went to work for a new hotel called the Irving. Marriott. I called him up the day before graduation and he said, you know what, I have a job for you. And I had a job out of graduating out of the college directly to go to work for him. And so I'd really recommend if, if students have an opportunity to find an internship or, or maybe go and talk with somebody that you're interested in, get to know them, develop a network, develop people that you know in the industry, because if they don't have a job for you, they might recommend you to someone else. And so that's how I got my very first job. I was grateful to have that. And literally, I graduated, I think, on a Friday. And on Monday, we, we drove over the weekend to California and I started work. I just, I loved that. And they had a, what's called an executive meeting manager program through Marriott. And the training that they gave us was six months before we, we did anything. And so before I ever even started talking with customers in doing the work that the hotel wanted, I had, I had to go through additional training. So it's not just the university that you go to, you have to be trained in addition. And that was one of the best things for me because further on in my career, because I had the training of the Marriott background, many hotel companies, four or five years down the road, I would receive calls from headhunters asking me to come and work for their company because I had the background. I took the time to work for Marriott wasn't the highest paying job that was out there, but it was definitely the best education, which set the foundation for my entire your career. Absolutely. Well, and I love that you're bringing up the importance of networking and what role that played in making that connection from school 
to an actual career, an actual position. I think that's so critical. And as career coaches, I know we share that often with students, but it's great to hear a real life example of how that really bridged um, the gap there. So I love that. So I'm curious, so you, you're getting going in uh, the business, you're, you're loving hotel management, but eventually you decide to take a shift. Um, you're prompted to start your own business. So I'd love to hear why, what brought on this um, desire to have your own business? And also, you know, where did you gain the knowledge or the know-how for doing this successfully? Another great question. I apologize. You you asked me to give you a life lesson in on on the hotels, and I wanted to just share one that I was gonna that I thought about when I was in the hotel business. I was fortunate enough that I had met somebody that helped me. If I can share with anybody, if you get involved in a career that you love, share it with others that you know. I had a young man. Uh, we we lived next to a family, and this young man was in high school at the time, and I had been in the hotel business for about five years. And they asked me if he could shadow me for a day. And I still remember him. He came dressed sharp. He was a a young adult in high school. I think he was in his junior year. He came and uh, we had the best day. Took him to lunch, showed him what we did. He sat and listened to calls. He met, how I met with customers, just shadowed me for that day. About 10 years later, I get a letter from him and he is the general manager of the uh, Sundance Resort. And he followed that career until he became the general manager. And so um, I truly believe that no matter what career or uh, job that you work in, not only do we market ourselves or network ourselves, but we need to also give back uh, to share with others to help them succeed. And so I'm sure that you probably, maybe some of the students that are listening have brothers or sisters that are, are young that are probably wanting to know the same questions that they're feeling. So the hospitality business, it was it was great, and it was also great to share that with others. I had the privilege in the hospitality business to work from starting as an executive meeting manager until I was a CEO of a 220-acre resort, but I didn't get there automatic. Many of the young adults that I would hire into management positions almost felt like, hey, I just graduated, and next year I'm going to be the general manager. And what I wanted to just share with some of those were you need to also get the experience the university is outstanding at preparing us, but unless we get some of the, the actual experience, the getting dirty, making the bed, or serving somebody, or taking care of a customer complaint, I think those are the things that help set the foundation for your success as well. So try and apply work experience with the education, and I can guarantee success. You'd asked me a little bit about how did I transition into moving into the mortgage business. I'll be, I'll be right up front with you on that. I helped work with a company called Double Tree Hotels when they first started. They were just a young company. And I think I went to work for them because they made these really good cookies. But I was out in Washington, D.C. at the time and just loving it out there. And I was asked by Double Tree Hotels to help turn a Ramada hotel into a Double Tree hotel, which we did. And it was exciting. And so Double Tree, when I was finished with that, came to me and said, if you could live anywhere, where would it be and where would you like to go? And my wife was from Orem, Utah. And so I asked if there was anything out in the uh, Utah area. I love to go there. And so they actually moved our entire family out to Salt Lake City. And uh, there was a Red Lion Hotel. It's now the downtown Hilton, but that hotel needed to change their name to Doubletree Hotels. So when I moved out there, um, we bought a home out in Salt Lake. And when we purchased our home, the mortgage broker at the time, it wasn't the most friendly experience that I had ever experienced. Uh, um, It seemed like I was the one more excited about purchasing my home and getting prepared. And so after we bought our home, I was kind of disappointed in that experience. And so I thought it could be done a little better. And so I had been in the hotels for quite a few years and loved it and was finding great success there. And we came to Salt Lake and had great success. But in the back of my mind, I kept thinking there might be a better way to treat people and how they should be treated. And so my brother-in-law was in the mortgage business at the time, and I asked him lots of questions. And he said that his company had a training program at nights if you were interested in learning about the mortgage business. I said, I'm in. And so every Tuesday night for several months, I would go to this training session and learn what's what's about mortgages. And I know it sounds crazy. I was at the kind of the top of my career and everything going for me. And I came home one day and I told my wife, I'm going to start a mortgage company. 
Well, as many as you might have expected, she was, uh, she didn't know about that idea. And, but she was so supportive and said, okay. And so the next day I resigned and uh, the president of the company called me and did, did, no one knew what happened no, and nothing bad was happening. I just wanted to try something new and I wanted to own something. Well, back in 1998, when I started it, uh, rates went from seven and a half percent to nine and a half percent. And I lost my, and I had just quit my job. And I thought, oh boy, what have I done? I woke up that morning at 4 a.m. in the morning and I wrote out a plan. And I said, you know what? I can be successful. I can do this and I'm going to do this. And there were many people that thought this wasn't the best route to follow. And so what I did was I went to my very first bank the next morning and I told them who I was. And I told them that I wanted to learn as much as I could about the mortgage business. And they kind of took me under their wing. And I was what's called a mortgage broker. So I would actually find the loan, I'd prepare the loan, and then I would sell it to the bank. Well, after I got my first bank and my first loan, it went very well. I thought this was great. And so I started taking all of the experience of marketing and sales that I had used over the past 12 years as the sales manager to the director of sales to the director of marketing, and I applied it in my new business. And for years after that, it, it, it was one of the best experiences. So U Utah was going well, and, and I had family in Las Vegas. And I thought that'd be a great idea. So I went down to Las Vegas and they opened an office in Las Vegas. And then I had some friends out in Arizona. I thought that'd be kind of cool. So we decided to open up an office out there. And then Idaho was close enough. So we decided to open an office in Idaho. But whenever you go to these places, you have to fly. And so uh, um, I would always get on Southwest Airlines several times a week and I would fly to my offices and it was a lot of fun, but uh, I spent a lot of time, a lot of effort. But the one thing that I did to help make that successful is I was went to every single closing of my customers, whether it was in Idaho, Arizona, Nevada, or Utah. I would personally call them and keep them informed. If something didn't go well, I took the responsibility for that. But one of the main things that I tried to do was try treat others well and take care of them. And I truly believe that was why I had the success that I did over that time frame. Well, and I, I have to go back a little bit, Kent. You said something. So you said, you know, I just decided to quit and it maybe didn't make sense to a lot of people. And that got me thinking, what was going through your head at the time? Because you made it sound like that was a pretty easy decision to make. In your head, was it easy to just let go of, of that career? Another great question. For me, when I was younger, I think I felt invincible. I truly felt, you know what? I'm going to be able to do this. I'm not worried. It's just going to, everything's going to be great. I had no worries. I truly believed that the background that I had learned from the university, from my training, I used to train the sales managers at Doubletree Hotels how to sell. What I did was I took those same basic concepts and applied them to the business. I took all of the things that I had helped develop and taught and just apply them into my own business. And the two parts of it too is I've always felt, and I treated everyone in the hotel business the same way, is that if you take care of others, they're going to take care of you. And that was my philosophy. And so I knew it was going to be successful. I won't lie. I was scared. I didn't know rates went up so fast. I didn't know how the economy would change. Kind of like how this COVID last year at the same time, how would I have ever known COVID was going to come? And so I chose to make that decision and I never looked back. And after the first year, my family was on board. Mom and dad were on board. Everybody, oh, that's the best idea ever. But Many times is we're thinking about these great ideas. We have to personally believe in ourselves. We have to know that we can do it, which we can, and uh, then work with others to make it successful. I had to still learn. I had to learn how to be a mortgage broker. Right after that, the state decided to, they put out an education program. So I had to go back to school to learn how to be a mortgage broker. Every single year, I have to spend hours of continuing education and learning to continue to keep my license current. Lifelong learning, what our subject is today, is in, in no matter what business you go into, you're always learning. And I truly believe that if you stop learning, you fall back. Others move forward. You have to continue to learn 
always in everything that you're doing. Absolutely. And I think you bring up a really important point of continual learning, even after you maybe quote unquote, get the dream job, that that isn't your end goal, that that is just the beginning of a new journey where you continue to gain knowledge and add, add to that. So I really love that. So you mentioned, you've hinted that you started to do more flying as you expanded offices, you started to do more and more flying. So at what point did you say to, say to yourself, I want to be the one who's flying? I always wanted to fly as a youth. Uh, my father and I would fly radio control planes, but financially, uh, it just, just couldn't work into my uh, budget. And so when the mortgage business started to be successful, we moved uh, the family from the West Jordan area out to Heber, and we moved right next to the airport. And uh, I thought, and I still believe that Heber is just one of the most beautiful small towns. And I wanted to volunteer and be a part of that. So I ran for mayor. And when I ran for mayor, um, I was the newcomer into that beautiful uh, city and I didn't win. I was so sad. And so the next day, uh, instead of being disappointed, I walked over to the airport and I took an intro flight from the Heber City Airport. And I had so much fun. And at the time I said, I am spending so much money um, on airline tickets. I think I could do this myself. And so I spent the next four months learning how to fly. I took my private pilot certificate from Heber City and I had so much fun. It was great. And so when I became a, a, a private pilot, I bought my first airplane and uh, I just flew to my offices. If I needed to go to Las Vegas, Idaho, Arizona, I just flew myself. And it was, it was so much fun, so rewarding. Um, I, I just had a really great time. And when the family wanted to go down to Disneyland, we just went to Disneyland. Or if the, we wanted to go on a trip somewhere, it just really gave me the freedom to do that. But I will tell you, um, yes, the mortgage business was so successful, but again, we come back to that learning part, that learning curve. I, I think that one of the things that I really enjoy is I, to challenge myself. I think each one of us probably feel that way, that I looked at aviation as kind of pinnacle. Those that are in aviation are so amazing and I wanted to be like them, but I wondered how I was going to be. So I had to go to a school. I had to go to a flight instructor, someone who would take me and teach me. There were a couple of times that uh, uh, when you fly in the mountains, there is uh, turbulence uh, in, uh, in the air. And there were twice I got the airplane shook so much that I, I, I kind of quit for a week or two. And I didn't like that too much. I said, you know what, I don't need to do this flying thing. And so, uh, but I always went back and uh, I, I learned the ground school, I learned what I was needed to know. I had great instructors at that time. When I took that, uh, the practical test to become a private pilot and I passed that, you know, I think it was just, I was floating. When I flew for the very first time by myself, uh, it was just an amazing feeling. And I knew that was something I wanted to pursue more. But as a private pilot uh, flying myself, I found myself getting myself into situations where clouds would come in and I, I wouldn't be able to fly through the clouds or um, it would get dark and I, I didn't feel as comfortable with that. And so I decided at that time that I needed, I needed to learn more. If I'm going to be safe, if I'm gonna take my family with me, I need to have every certificate and rating I possibly can. And so I spent the next two years flying all over the country to find those that would teach me and uh, those that would be able to uh, get me the certificate or the rating or, and then I would just fly and fly and fly. I ended up having the privilege of teaching uh, flight instructing uh, after that. And kind of the transition that I want to share with you is, um, I didn't know that aviation was going to be my next career. Uh, the, the mortgage business was great. Uh, financially, it was great. It gave me the opportunity to fly as much as I wanted, wherever I wanted to go. But as life uh, happens, things change for all of us. And the mortgage business changed. I One of my largest offices was in Las Vegas. And the, the Las Vegas was going through a growth period in the early 2000s. Uh, many people thought homes were worth more than they were. And uh, I'd have families call me, well, my home's worth $100,000 more. And I had only done their mortgage a year ago. And 
the, the interesting thing was it ended up crashing and uh, the financial crisis in the 2000 really affected my, uh, my business, my mortgage business. And it just happened to be at that particular time that I was, I uh, had enough hours and I had the certificates and the ratings that were needed that the airlines uh, had a job opportunity for me. And so I was able to uh, keep my mortgage business in Utah and I followed a lifelong dream. And I had the privilege to go to work for a commercial aviator. I worked for a company called Masaba Airlines flying for Northwest Airlines. And they had just come out with this jet called a CRJ 200 and a uh, Canadian regional jet. And I had the privilege of, of flying and, and being a part of that company. And uh, it, it was a very exciting uh, time for me. But again, learning uh, commercial airline, going into the commercial business, you're back to learning all over again. I had many captains that were my kids' age. I kind of got into it in the middle of my life, and that's kind of a humbling experience. Are you able or are you willing to, yes, be a president of a company and make the money you make and then go back to earning less than $17,000 and and sitting and not being at home and sleeping in a motel room with eight other people. And we all have to, uh, that's a big learning experience. And um, it was definitely a challenge, a huge learning experience for me. And when I went through the training for to become a commercial airline pilot, you're gone for two months straight studying and, and learning and preparing and uh, taking tests. And all of these tests uh, that you take are, if you don't pass, the retraining, but if you don't pass then, then you don't work. So uh, it was a tremendous amount of learning and, and studying uh, during that particular time. Absolutely. And I guess a follow-up question that I have to this, again, as I'm thinking about the, the different careers that you you took on, did you ever receive, you know, ridicule or criticism, you know, from family or friends or bosses who just said, you know, you're flighty, you're not willing to just, you know, be stable and pick one career. Did you ever receive any, any of that criticism? Probably. <laughs> yeah. You know, em employers employers do love looking at those that are stable, and I I, I back that up. But um, the world, according to Captain King, I truly believe that you should follow your dream. I, I think that if you want to be something, um, study, learn how to do it, and follow it. The mortgage business I've owned for now almost 30 years, and uh, I've, I've loved it, and it's been a wonderful thing for me. But Many years ago, all I've done now is keep the license current. Um, I chose to follow aviation because life had made that change for me. I still think that uh, if the, the markets and the things hadn't changed, I probably would still have that. But um, always in the back of my heart, I think I would still love aviation. Coming back to aviation, uh, when I started in the aviation world, the fuel prices were changing. Uh, uh, the airlines were, were called furloughing, which is laying off. So you'd have to go to work for a different airline. But once I got in there, I don't think I ever wanted to leave. I, I loved that. And uh, when you do talk to people, you kind of have, if you do have different jobs or other things, you're able to talk to them about different ideas or different places you've worked or lived. My wife and I, we've had the chance to live all over the country with that hospitality business. Flying, I've had the chance to, to fly over the, all over the world uh, from that standpoint. So these are dreams that I had. Um, I hope that Anybody that's listening will follow their dreams. I hope that they'll find the, they'll learn what they need to do to follow that dream. And they do that. You're always going to find those that are out there that might not agree with you. And, but you have to be the one that says, I'm going to do it. I, there were times that uh, I've gone to my wife and I've got a great idea. And she's always been so supportive. Maybe her face didn't think it at the time, but she's always been super supportive. I've always had lots of fun ideas and always thinking of new things. But one of the great things about it, and we always come back to it, is um, working with others, working with people, sharing sharing what I know with others, uh, whether it be teaching here at Utah State or uh, something about flying or hotels. And if I can help somebody get a job with an airline company or help them get a job in a hotel or maybe help them refinance their home, something 
I hope that that's something I can do. And I don't think I would have been able to do any of that unless I had followed those dreams. You know, and it's interesting, Kent, as I'm listening to kind of your career path unfold, a common theme that I keep thinking about and hearing from your story is a lot of these career changes came at a time where you were presented with a problem that you didn't have an answer to, but you wanted to learn. You wanted to figure out what the solution could be. And in and of itself, as you were trying to solve a problem like flying um, or, or um, you know, whatever it was, you you decided to just take it upon yourself. You know, you, you bought a mortgage company because you had a bad experience or maybe just, you know, a not a great experience and you wanted to learn how to create that great experience. And so I think that's a really powerful lesson for me of just hearing, you know, when you are confronted with a challenge and you don't know how to solve it, perhaps that's a, a chance for you to to learn, right? Rather than just saying, well, I'm going to avoid, you know, all housing or mortgage companies, you're going to say, no, I want to learn that. I want to master that. So that, I, first of all, I'm incredibly impressed with that attitude. And I think that's something that anyone can learn from. Also, so moving a little bit into what you're currently doing. So as a retiree, um, you decided to be extremely lazy. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, you decided to teach um, in your free time. So you now work for USU. Um, and in order to get on that path, you actually went back to school and got your master's degree. And that was just um, just back in 2019, so fairly recently. So I'd love to hear about that experience of going back to school, um, maybe when you hadn't anticipated that you know, 10 or 20 years ago. But I'd love to hear about kind of that transition into getting more education. My wife is a teacher and she has been the, the greatest example for me of uh, continual education. Um, she has two masters and a, uh, a bachelor's and I have two bachelors and a master's. So she outweighs me and that's, that, that's a bummer. <laughs> I've got to work on that. But uh, let's go back just a little bit is when I, I had the privilege to fly all around the country to get different ratings and certificates at the time. But it doesn't mean I knew everything. And once I started flying commercially, I had uh, time uh, to study even more. And so I, my first degree is in hospitality management. So I went back and received another a second degree bachelor's in, in aviation science. I didn't feel, I here I was flying a 65-passenger uh, uh, airline jet that they had trained me on. I felt well trained from that standpoint, but I didn't feel like I knew everything that I needed to know about aerodynamics or high altitude flying or, um, so I went back to school and uh, studied and it was, it, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed learning. I felt like it, it took me out of my box. Um, sometimes we can get so uh, comfortable in um, our current world that we don't look outside the box. And I had to look outside the box. I had to uh, learn how to write papers again. I had to learn, uh, this is 10 years or oh, almost 15 years uh, past the time that I went to school in the first time. And so it really uh, helped me a great deal uh, be well-rounded in my profession. And so I received that job and then I went back to school two years later and received another bachelor's degree. The opportunity here at Utah State University is uh, when I retired, I I miss aviation. I miss flying the jet. Utah State University has really uh, been amazing for me. Um, they had an opportunity to, they had just purchased a CRJ 700 uh, flight training device here. Um, and it is amazing, just beautiful. And uh, uh, right as I was retiring, they had an opportunity for a teacher. And I said, that it would be a dream for me is to be able to still be involved in aviation and still take care of uh, some family uh, at home. And I hoped it would work out. And I came and met the individuals at Utah State University. And I will tell you, I have never been more impressed with a group of individuals ever. Genuine, smart, uh, and had this opportunity. And uh, I was hired back in 2018. And I will tell you, I, it has gone by so fast and is so much fun. But as in all those other opportunities, I felt like I didn't know everything. I still don't. But I didn't know enough that I wanted to know. And Utah State University had a, uh, a, a master's of aviation science. Before I even started work, I enrolled. 
I was a little eager. I decided to enroll and finish it in one year. I took, uh, gosh, I'm not sure, 12 to 16 credits a semester in my first teaching semester. And, and so when the students told me how tough things were, I could really relate to that. And the writing and, and the professional instructors and the professionalism that I received uh, really has helped me uh, be a much better teacher here at Utah State University. And uh, I loved it. I learned so much. I would really recommend to everybody just continue to learn, find a class, find a continuing education, uh, just uh, sit in on a lecture, wherever it might be of something that you enjoy or call upon someone in a field that you like um, and, and pick their brain, ask them questions because we love talking about our field as I, you know, I love talking about aviation, but this was just an outstanding thing for me. And uh, one of the great things that I get the chance now to do is um, I get a chance to teach uh, those master's classes. And uh, I have uh, been so impressed with those students uh, that are in that I learn from these students. Um, I take time, they're paying money to come to the university. So um, I really try to spend as much time as I can researching and preparing and developing things that will help them succeed uh, in their career. And I truly believe that's what the teachers did for me. And that's what I want to do for, for our students here. And uh, um, it's just been great. I, I, I really enjoy learning and I'm still learning from the students that I teach. Well, and I, I would say that USU is incredibly lucky to have you as a professor. So that goes both ways. <laughs> so as I, again, as I'm reflecting back on this, this incredible story, this journey of uh, different careers and, and changes and pivots, one question that has kind of come to me as I've been preparing for this interview is, did you ever feel like when you jumped from career to career that there was a disconnect that maybe, you know, your skills didn't apply in, in one area? Or did it feel like you were just collecting skills as you went and you saw them become transferable in different places? That's a good one. In regards to when you start your foundation, I think it started uh, back when, when I was just beginning in school and in my through my high school years, um, I really found that uh, we build upon those things. I truly believe that when I moved from, when I started from the entertainment industry where you're entertaining someone uh, into marketing, that you're taking that entertainment field and you're sharing it. You're able to talk to somebody face to face. You're able to um, express yourself and what you, the, the company that you're working for, you're able to make sure that you're able to meet the things of the customer. Um, that really helped me from a marketing standpoint, how to, to sell and how to market a business. And so I think that rolled into the mortgage business from that standpoint. So I applied those things, the skills that I had into the mortgage business. Yes, it might not have been the same uh, white shirt, blue suit, blue tie of everyone, but I tried to apply uh, Ken King's or Captain King's ideas to it. When I chose to uh, aviate, um, you sit in the cockpit with another uh, person uh, for many hours, sometimes 16 hours a day. And so I was able to take some of my experiences and share it with them. Maybe I'm not as experienced as them to be the captain, but as the first officer, I was able to take um, my experiences and and share it with them. And uh, I truly feel that that helped in my education and my background allowed me to maybe speak to all different uh, levels of pilots and different backgrounds, things that they went to. And I've tried to, when I moved here uh, to Utah State, bring all of that with me. Um, I don't know if my students like it or not, but I think a quarter of the class is stories and I like sharing pilot stories and, and hopefully that I can share my crazy stories of, of either failures or positive or successes to help them succeed so that they can enjoy that. And hopefully they, they enjoy the time that I spend with them on that. So I truly believe that anything that you have, that you build upon, that you learn, you'll be able to use that in any business, in any profession. Yes, my resume does look a little interesting with all of those crazy things, but I think that if you have that dream, that you want to be a pilot, come and fly with us here at Utah State. Or if you'd like to work in the hospitality business, there's many opportunities or whatever 
whatever profession that you're interested in, uh, take your personality and your love and your background and then share it with others. That's what an employer is looking for. Maybe not just the cookie cutter, but what you have to offer them. Love that. Well, Kent, I didn't prepare you for this question, but it's popped into my head and I, I feel a need to ask it. So I was thinking back to your experience during the recession and it kind of felt like perhaps a door closed in the sense where um, the market just wasn't what you would expect it. It wasn't what you had prepared for um, and your career path just wasn't um, what you had anticipated. And it really made me think of COVID-19 and probably what a lot of students are going through right now. They feel like perhaps some doors are closing opportunities that they had once um, planned and prepared for maybe aren't looking the same or aren't are just aren't there anymore. So I'd love to have you share some advice for people who maybe are feeling those effects and what advice you would give um, in pivoting. First of all, uh, if, if anyone's been affected by that COVID-19 for their families, um, I'm, I'm sorry. And I uh, wish them the very best on that. But I will tell you that life is full of cycles. My cycle, I'll just share a few of them with you. During 9-11, uh, 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 our country experienced quite a, a devastating time. And uh, that led into many of the financial difficulties that followed, not necessarily just in airlines, but also in business and in, in finances. Then in later in 2000, uh, around seven or eight, the fuel crisis uh, happened and many fuel, I, I used to run to a gas station that had $5 a gallon. I thought that was kind of cool if I could find a gas station that would have $5 or, or uh, a gallon. And so that cycle happened. And then as we move through, uh, I was in the airline business when I got into it, very similar to when I got in the mortgage business, I started to go to work for a company in Masaba and the fuel prices changed and I got furloughed. I lost that job. Then I went to work for a company called Calm Air. And the day we were supposed to start class, they told us we couldn't come. And then I went to work for a company called Mesa. I got through all of my training and they let me go the day I was finished doing my training. And I finally, um, <laughs> the only way I got my job, and I'm going to share this with you, is I was teaching a student at 8.30 in the morning at Provo Airport. And I got a phone call on my phone and I normally don't answer my phone when I'm with a student, but the phone call came from St. Louis and I was waiting for a call from a company called CoJet Airlines. So at 9 a.m. in the morning, they called me and they said, Ken King, if you can be in St. Louis by five o'clock, you got the job. I said, I will be there. It click. That was it. So I had no idea how I was going to get myself to St. Louis by five o'clock. I didn't know what time flights were. I drove up to Salt Lake City Airport in the clothes I had on. I bought an airline ticket and I flew to St. Louis and I was there about 4.55 p.m. I got a phone call at five o'clock and said, are you here? And I said, I'm here. They drove up to the airport, picked me up and dropped me off at a hotel. As I was driving to the hotel, the uh, person who was taking me to the hotel said, had you not shown up at five o'clock, the gentleman, the first gentleman we called, called us back and said he wanted the job and we were going to give it to him had you not shown up. I had the chance to work for that company and to fly a CRJ 700 and it was one of the best things ever, but I had to be willing to say, I'm going to come right now. COVID-19, yes, has created many difficult things, but I'm going to tell you, it's going to get better. It's definitely going to get better, not only in the aviation business, in it, on all businesses. And we are, COVID-19 is something that's definitely a crisis now. It's top of our minds, but let's get a year or two past that. Things are going to start getting stronger again. And I'm going to tell you, there's something else down in the future. It's going to be another cycle. So, if you're not prepared from a standpoint of education, you study, you learn constantly, make yourself the one that every employer wants. Be that person that is excited to take on the new opportunity. That's my focus to you during this COVID-19 is, I hate it that it's out there, wearing the masks, the things that we need to do, but follow those guidelines, but continue to learn new things. It will definitely help you in the future. And this cycle will end, it's gonna get better, and then another cycle will come and we'll be prepared. 
Absolutely. I love that hopeful perspective. And I, I think you're exactly right that uh, we will always face challenges. In, and I like that that um, idea of cycles, that they will come and go. And it's our job to continue to learn regardless. So I love that. Well, Kent, we are just about out of time here today, but I do want to close with one final question. And that question is, what advice would you give to people about establishing a mindset of lifelong learning as they build their careers? Well, first of all, Marissa, thank you for letting me be here and talking to me today. I truly believe lifelong learning is important for every single individual. I think that we need to take the time to write our goals out, establish those things that we're interested in and that, and then find a way to accomplish them. I'm older. I've had the privilege to go into different places and learn and also work in those, but um, I'm not stopping. Um, I'm continually, uh, there's one certificate that I don't have. And this year I've put it on my goal. I'm going to go take that exam. I'm going to go after that certificate. And then after I get that certificate, I want to become like a gold see I want to be a top CFI I want to I there are things here at the university I want to do and I want to learn and I want to be a better teacher each one of us has to make that decision you can't have Captain King can't sit in Captain King's office and him tell you you have to do it that's a it's a, it's a lifelong choice that you have to make and um, we talked a little bit about the COVID thing yes this is a crisis that's up there but uh, we need to learn about this and then we need to learn how we can do better at our employers or places that we work we need to make sure that we're the best employee that they have and that they'll want to uh, promote us or they'll want to uh, send you to uh, learn more at another class but in order for us to find success in our lives we need to put learning at the forefront of that and continue to learn we've got to focus on uh, learning in all that we do and again, it's just been a pleasure to be speaking with you today. Well, Kent, that is a beautiful way to wrap up the day. Um, again, I so appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing your many experiences. There's so much to be learned from what you've gone through. And, and so I, I really, really appreciate that. To learn more about Utah State University's aviation program, visit the link in the episode's bio below. Thanks for joining us here at the Career Studio today. Please join us next week as we continue to discuss this month's theme of lifelong learning.